By the way, with gold, for example, we, we saw record buyings of central banks who bought gold like never before, you know, like, like, like since 1968, not anymore, you know. And why they're doing that? Because they lose the trust in, in their own product, in the paper money, in the, in the fiat scam. So they buy gold in the emerging markets, in Brazil, in China, in Turkey, because they know we will see a second inflation wave. We have to, to save our purchasing power. And they know there will be a limit, an end time for the fiat currencies. Welcome back to Soar Financially. Welcome back to our channel where we discuss the macro to understand the micro. My name is Kai Hoffman. I'm the at JR Mining guy on Twitter and the CEO of the Soar Financial Group. And I'm really looking forward to this discussion today because I'll be joined by a good friend of ours, Mark Friedrich of Friedrich Partner and Friedrich Vermögensverwaltung and best-selling author. Uh, he's been a speaker at Deutsche Goldmesse a couple of times in the past. And I'm really looking forward to catching up because he's got a finger on the pulse. As I said, he's a wealth advisor, but he also looks at mining stocks. And uh, we're going to, you know, paint a fairly holistic picture. Of course, we're going to do a bit of a review of 2023. And we're trying to forecast 2024 a little bit. What kind of key investment trends does Mark see? What What is happening in the world? And what should we react to? Where are the biggest opportunities? Where can we make some money? Isn't that what we're all uh, isn't that what it's all about? To be honest, I think it is. All right. With that, with that said, hit the subscribe button and let me bring Mark on the screen. Mark, it's good to see you. Hallo, schön, herzlich willkommen. <laughs> Hallo, herzlich willkommen. Ja, danke schön für die Einladung. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you very much, Kai. Yeah, we, we have to do this in English, but uh, für, für all deutsche Zuhörer, unten auf CC drücken, dann kann man deutsche Subtitel sich anmachen. Also, you, you, you can listen to German or you can read German subtitles to this interview. Mark, it's great to see you again. Thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, it's it's time for a bit of a recap. It's, uh, what is it, December 19th? You know, year's pretty much over. The week has already slowed down tremendously here. My inbox is uh, not seeing a lot of inflows today, so it's it's fairly quiet, but uh, perfect time to recap. Let, let's, let's start there. What were some of the biggest trends for you, Mark, in 2023? Yeah, definitely geopolitics was a big topic and of course um artificial intelligence was a topic but also i think commodities i think we see a rebounds and we see um new interest in uranium for example but also of course in, in digital gold in, in 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 bitcoin so anyhow we also saw um the BRICS. You know, we saw um, the, the fight against the dollar, emancipation of the BRICS countries. So there were a lot of interesting topics we, we have to cover, actually. And I think we see a shift, a paradigm shift in, in the US dollar, but also in the mood of the investors um, in, in, in case of, of commodities, as well as, um, of course, um, Bitcoin and um, gold. I think we, we saw the bottom in, in, in gold. Um, and I think we will have a great opportunity for the next couple of years. So, yeah, there are special topics and a lot of topics topics we, we have to discuss and you have to put into your strategy for the next couple of years because I think definitely that we are in a paradigm shift and you have to focus and th see oh, how do you invest. You know, I think bonds um, will see a short recovery, but um, the long-term uh, investment in, in, in bonds is, is not given. I think the 60-40 portfolio is over as well as the DCA or the passive uh, portfolio. I think you have to, um, um, yeah, speculate more i think it, it's it's it will be a really volatile market in the next couple of years and that's why i think you have to buckle up and um, have a clear strategy and a game plan how to invest in the next couple of years uh, absolutely you, you mentioned it like I, I wrote it down as well there's a gazillion topics we need to talk about <laughs> if you were to pick one let's start with that if you were to pick one topic to discuss first which one would it be Oh my gosh. But as a German, of course, energy, because I think um, we have the most incompetent um, government ever seen in my lifetime, of course. And I think it was a big mistake. And I was very vocal about it, that um, to switch off the nuclear power plants in Germany is a, is a big mistake. And they promised us everything, you know, they put ideology um, 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 over everything, actually. And now we see the prices for energy didn't um, go down like promised from the Green Party. And um, they went up, actually. And we see deindustrialization and we see it was a mistake. And I think um, we need fossil fuels for a very long time. We will we will use it and, and other countries use it. And we see the takeovers in the in the energy sector. We saw Exxon Mobil. We saw has the takeover and everything. So I think um, this is a, is a very big topic for the next couple of years. And I think 
um, oil beneath 70 dollars uh, for a barrel is a steal actually and um, we see um, definitely more money getting into coal into uranium but also into gas and and oil so this is a very big topic actually for me and um, energy and you can make a good investment strategy in the next couple of years if you get the right stocks and the right etfs yeah, we we just witnessed the climate conference in uh, in Dubai there, and I think the German politicians got uh, hit of their head a little bit uh, with their uranium or nuclear strategy as well, because everybody's saying, well, we're pledging to increase nuclear energy or production of nuclear energy because it's cleaner. It it is clean, and yeah, uh, we're exactly. extending runtime of coal power plants. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it is mind blowing. Um, that all said, and given all the topics you have mentioned, like how healthy do you think the economy is these days? We're in a recession, actually, Kai, because we see um, world um, GDP is like uh, the, the growth is 1.5 percent. And um, if you look back in the past, 1.5 percent actually was a recession. So the, the debts are much higher. They grow much higher. So the, the growth of the economy, of the world economy, is not holding up with the, with the debt growth. And we see the problems all over the place. For example, the United States right now have uh, debts 34 trillion dollars it's incredible and it's the it's it's the biggest the biggest um um uh, point in the in the in the in the um national household is like um the um the interest rates the the payments on the interest rates it's like over one trillion dollars and um, it's supposed to be always the military budget but it's now um yeah not number one anymore it's number two now and this is a, a clear sign that we see an accumulation of crises of debts and of problems for the next years for example in Germany we paid in 2021 the german government paid only 3.7 um trillion dollars no billion sorry 3.7 billion dollars on their debts interest rates yeah and next year it will be 10 times more 37 billion so this is 8% of the budget is incredible so we can't hold this high interest rates any longer because there will be extreme problems for the politicians for the governments for the people in the end so yeah we see definitely a paradigm sh paradigm shift there as well yeah, absolutely let's stay on the topic of the fed funds rate in the eu like uh, interest rate debate here as well we just had news out last week as well lagarde spoke powell spoke uh, what do you take away from that like What's the sort of the, the the message they sent as well? Lagarde said, "Well, we didn't even discuss rate cuts." While Powell said, "Okay, we're at peak rates right now. Uh, we might have to in decrease because the inflation has come down faster than we thought it might have." Uh, what are, what's your opinion on that? I think they're in a dilemma. I think it's total chaos, actually, because they're desperate. Because they know they can't keep the, the rates that high because there will be enormous problems for the, the government in the US, but also in Europe. But on the other side, they have to decide, do, do we fight inflation or recession? What, what's, what's the goal? Did they lose anyway? It, it doesn't matter how they choose. They will lose the one way or the other way. So actually, I don't want to change positions with them. You know, I'm sorry for them, for, <laughs> for Jerome as well as for Christine in, in Frankfurt. Yeah, but um, they know that the, the, the financial system is coming to an end, that we are mathematical and um, limited. And that's why they try to, to create another solution. And the solution is called CBDC, Central Bank, Central Bank Digital Currencies. They, they hope they, that they, the fiat scam can work longer in on the digital area, you know, because with the digital money, there's no possibility of a bank run. They can um, cover everything in, in real time and they can program the um, or, yeah, even dictate how long this money is worth to, to spend it. And they can say, OK, if you don't um, eat, I don't know, um, vegan meat or if you fly too often on holidays with a, with a plane, you get a, um, a reduction or a tax or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's like interesting. Like my mind went towards the uh, the German uh, deficit spending, and uh, they were trying to use some money from the Corona or from the COVID pools and uh, sort of use it elsewhere. <laughs> Is it like, they're clowns. It's... They're definitely clowns. <laughs> they're they're crooks, actually. You yeah. know, because it's the first time that the German government got punished, and they 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 um, what is it called? They um, 
sent a, a, a budget to to the to the um, court and they rejected it. It's it's like what what the heck? Every every company would get prosecuted. You know, they they would went to to court immediately, but they're still in power. So definitely, they are clowns who are govern govern us, and it's the worst and most incompetent um, government we've seen in Germany. Ever actually, and I think it's the it's the peak of stupidity, idiocracy. It was a good movie actually, and uh, incompetence and yeah. hubris as well. Now I've, my my mind went to is like if we had CBDCs, we could just cancel it. The money instead of using it elsewhere, yeah. we could just cancel it, right? It's like okay, yeah. you can use it for COVID spending, but you can't use it for anything else. Yeah, right. Exactly. You can you can use it for for renting a bike, but not for renting a car. Or um, if you use too much on alcohol they can just switch you off you know say, ah, it's not good like in china in china there were protests against the the banks because of the real estate um credits and they just switched from green to to red and they couldn't buy a ticket for the for the train or for the bus so that's how social credit program actually works it's like the ministry of truth in 1984 from george orwell let's investigate that a little bit because I've, i've had a lot of guests on discussing okay we're running into a, de a debt problem where we already have a debt problem but it's, it's getting out of hand eventually we won't be able to pay for our debt but uh, you, you mentioned the introduction of cbdc's might prolong the let's call it the suffering right um how, how would that work like because it's still money the debt is still there we'd still have to pay the debt it's not like we can you know just trim it or forget about it uh how would the cbdc sort of factor in there It's a power tool, actually. It's just for surveillance and um, yeah, to to stop bank runs like we saw in in spring twenty three in the U.S. And I think they will program it. So, for example, um, if you don't use it till the end of the month, it will be devalued, or they will trick you in and scam you into the digital currencies. They say, hey, if you pay with your wallet from the at the Fed or at the ECB, you get a, a discount for five percent. And we see in the, in times of inflation and everybody is struggling with rent and food and, and gasoline and so on, they will happy embrace it and will say, oh, yes, 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 I use the CBDC, I use the digital euro or dollar because I, I save money. And then that's when everybody is trapped because as soon as everybody is using the CBDC, you can't get out of the system anymore because you can't withdraw cash on the ATM. You, can, you, can, you can't buy anonymously a gold, for example, or silver or diamonds. And they control you every step, actually. And then I think we all will have a wallet at the ECB or at the at Fed. And then they can, for example, dictate on what you use it. Is it, is it, is it green enough? Is it woke enough? Uh, uh, did, you, did you gender? What kind of pronouns do you use? And, and, and so on. It, it, it's, 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 it's a pool of um, creativity unlimited actually and they can do everything to um fight for example um what um oh, sorry i don't know the word right now the um say it in german i'll help you out i'll tr i'll try uh, um critical critical uh, crit critical critical thinkers for example you know if you critic a uh, critic against the government or against the politicians or against the the woke society then they can cancel you and they can shut off your 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 wallet at the ECB or the Fed yeah interesting yeah it's it's, it's an interesting theory because uh, July 2028 I think is the date uh, the EU or ECB can introduce CBDCs for the first time I believe I've seen the paper sometime Earlier this year, I think it was in June or so, something came out that uh, sort of asked or introduced CBDCs to the, uh, the yes. parliament, I think. So um, it was interesting. Inter it was an interesting read, I'll tell you that. <laughs> But uh, what, know, one, pa I one know. paragraph is like, we're not. it's not to control. We're not going to have a control over it. But, right? you know, I, there is no other use case, actually, because I talked to some members of the ECB and they told me in private and as well on, on camera, it's the only goal is surveillance. It's to to surveil all the, the, the citizens because we already have digital money. Over 90% of all transactions are digital. You know, the dollar, the euro, the yen, every every currency actually. And the, the only thing is that what the ECB or the central banks hate, they don't have the control. They don't know who is transferring money to whom. They just see at the end of the day the balance sheet between the banks. They see, okay, bank A to bank B, but they don't know for what and who is transferring the money. And they want to know everything and they want to have the control over it. So that's why they introduced the CBDCs. It's a digital dictatorship, actually. And I'm just warning, you know, everybody can make up his mind, can say, okay, this crazy German cracker, he's out of his mind. He's totally 
really over exaggerating but i warn because i think if they're if they have like noble um, ideas and really want to help the people and the citizens okay we will see but what happens if there is a, a, a shift in the mindset or a regime shift they can use it against everybody and we have to think about Julian Assange and so on if you tell the truth you're actually in danger still today and I, I'm just warning you know I don't know if it's happening I think the chance is big, pretty high but make up your own mind the last couple of years so many lies from top politicians from the top level and with with covid with with migration with everything actually you know and and our monetary system is 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 is, is in danger and we will see a, sh a paradigm shift with the monetary system and if this happens normally if you look back in the in the mirror you always see all the people the ordinary people lose purchasing power and that's what we will see in the next couple of years that's why you have to prepare and have to have a game plan and a strategy how to protect your purchasing power for the next couple of years. I was going to go currency first, but you brought up purchasing power, which leads me to inflation as well. And uh, this is, let's discuss the inflation topic. Paul Grugman, Nobel laureate, said, well, we're done with inflation. We won the war against inflation. What, what's your opinion on inflation? Are we done with it? Of course not. But let me say one thing first. Paul Krugman is a clown, a total clown. He's actually he's an idiot. I don't know what, what kind of drugs he's taking because he just posted something on X. Um, yeah, hey, inflation is going down. X, um, I think it was um, rent and, and food and everything. So you're, yeah. so <laughs> on what is it based actually on on, 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 on candles? So what, what, what the heck is going on? You know, and he, he, he thinks people are stupid. But perhaps it works, and he he won the fucking nope. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for my for my language, but um, we'll, we'll I can't, beep I it can't out. It. Yeah, no, no, you don't have to because I, it's my I, I I talked to him on on Twitter and uh, on X right now, and um, he, he I think he blocked me now. But um, it's stupid, you know. They think that we are all idiots, but we are not because we feel it every day in the supermarket at, when we buy groceries, when we go on the petrol station. It's not three percent it's more and i think there will be a second wave and we we just have the, the genie out of the bottle and you can't put her back yeah, a second inflation wave will come i think it will be next year perhaps end of next year or in 25 and it will be higher than the first inflation wave it's the same it's very very similar to the 70s in the 70s we had three inflation waves the second one was bigger than the first one and the third one was even bigger and it killed the people actually and this time with this debt and with so many people and problems and with globalization and banks and um, burdens and, and interest rates and so on it's actually the perfect recipe for a nuclear bomb i have to say so that's why you have to prepare i think we definitely will see the end of our monetary system in this decade and you have to prepare for it and if it won't happen you didn't do anything wrong because you invested in limited um, commodities in limited um, 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 assets for example and you need limited assets in an inflationary world more than ever and look back 100 years ago we had 1923 we had a hyperinflation in germany and there are so many parallelities right now to this time it's just blowing my mind and if you put the puzzle together and you see all these different um things you know geopolitics politics taxes and um, society problems and so on you have to prepare yourself and that's what i actually want to say every every viewer um Make up your mind and then think about it. Will I invest in in unlimited um, fiat money or in 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 in, in um, bonds and so on or in, in insurances or perhaps in a limited good like gold, like um, stocks in 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 commodities, in in real estate, in a forest, in a whiskey, in a bottle of whiskey, or in in, in Bitcoin or whatever. But in an inflationary world, you definitely need uh, limited assets. I need to follow up on the inflation discussion, especially the second wave. Um, you know, you, you've been saying unlimited money supply, you know, scarcity as well. But what is going to trigger that second wave inflation? Is it going to be additional QE, although they're not going to call it QE in the US and in Europe as well? Like what, what is going to trigger that second wave? If you look back in the past, Kai, it was always something happening in the banking sector or in the financial market. That's when the, the Fed actually pivoted. And it's always the same, you know, there's a 
credit crunch, for example, or the banks have any problems and then there is the pivot and then they um, lower the rates and then actually when the stock market also is uh, declining. And that's I think this will happen in the next year. We already see we have big problems. The, the banks have nearly $700 billion of not realized loss um, in their, in their uh, balance sheets in the U.S., just in the US, 700 billion. That's a lot of money, you know? And we see with the with the lowering, with the high, with the higher rates that we saw the, the banks in the US collapsing in, 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 in spring 2023. And there are problems in the financial market and they know it. And so I expect actually that next year there will there will be an event and the, the Fed is forced to do something to actually save. Wall Street and the banks. And that's what they always did. Don't forget who owns the Fed, you know, and who founded it. So they will, of course, protect their owners. Absolutely. Mark, we need to circle back to currencies because we jumped to inflation because you mentioned purchasing powers. I, I want to circle back to that. Uh, De-dollarization was a big trend in 2023. It came, but it disappeared again uh, as well. It was right around summertime. The BRICS meeting was in August. So de-dollarization was a big topic. Um, where, where do you stand on that topic, de-dollarization? And I want to throw in Argentina here as well. Everybody's trying to get rid of the dollar. Everybody, of course, in, uh, you know, in, in brackets here. Uh, but Argentina is trying to adopt it. Uh, how how, how does that all fit together? Yeah, I definitely think we saw the beginning of the end. That's for sure, actually. You know, the, he the hegemony of the U.S. is collapsing. We see emancipation um, in the BRICS states. We see that, for example, the petrodollar is not be not used anymore with every country in every trade. You know, there was always the deal, OK, we protect you, Saudi Arabia, and you use for every uh, business you do the petrodollar. It's over. They just realized we don't have to uh, do it anymore. So we actually switched from a unipolar world to a multipolar world. And these are actually yeah, challenging times and dangerous times for peace as well, as well for, for financial uh, safety. So you have to definitely get a strategy to um, plan wisely how to protect your money for the next couple of years, because I think we will see the end of the dollar. It won't happen like tomorrow, but I think we will see in 2024, um, the dollar will climb up again. But then, you know, with the BRICS countries and with the end of the hegemony of the U.S., we will see that um, countries and governments will also do commodity trades with gold, with Bitcoin, with other currencies, renminbi, yen, and so on. And they will realize, oh, it's even better, and it's 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 better for us because, uh, for example, some countries never became any richer with using the, the the dollar, and that's what they realized. And that's why many countries like Brazil said, hey. We don't do it anymore. We use other currencies as well. Javier Milai from Argentina, he said, OK, I want to outsource the central bank. I don't want to have the central bank anymore because they are not no use for us. And they never um, um, realized and they never achieved that the, the normal Argentinian citizen um, had more in the pocket than like 10 years ago. One bankruptcy after the next one. The, the, the government failed every like 20 years, actually. And the peso is a mess. And that's what he said. OK, um, I want to go to the dollar. I outsource the central bank to, to Washington. That's it. And then we will see. So I think that the dollar will be world currency for the next couple of years. But the, the impact will be lower. And we will see other currencies go up or other countries as well. And we are living in a multipolar world. And yeah, perhaps Bitcoin will be also like something like a, a world reserve currency in the future because it's decentralized and we don't need any politician and you separate the government from money, which is always a good advice. And by the way, with gold, for example, we, we saw record buyings of central banks who bought gold like never before, you know, like, like like since 1968, not anymore, you know. And why are they doing that? Because they lose the trust in, in their own product, in the paper money, in the, in the fiat scam. So they buy gold in the emerging markets, in Brazil, in China, in Turkey, because they know we will see a second inflation wave. We have to, to save our purchasing power. And they know there will be a limit, an uh, end time for the fiat currencies. 
Absolutely. Let's. I want to get to com- commodities and how to protect your money. Actually, uh, sort of as the last topic of discussion, you you mentioned it, you might have a few stock picks for us as well. But I want to talk tackle one more big topic, and that's the bond market in the U.S., which I think can be quite pivotal. Because uh, if you believe Simon Hunt, for example, he says it's the root of all evil, more or less. Okay, that's where it all starts, and that's where it probably will all end. He forecasts ten percent uh, bond yields at some point, meaning the bond market is completely going to collapse. Uh, curious what your thoughts are on this, because you sort of hinted at that or a similar scenario uh, in, the, in the introduction. Yeah, um, I have to agree, actually, unfortunately, because we just um, had a 40 years um, bull market uh, with, com- uh, with the bonds, and this is over. This is also a paradigm shift we're just witnessing right now. And it will be tremendous, of course, because um, there's so much money in the bond market. It's more, it's three times more than in the, in the, in the stock market in the, in, the, uh, in the whole world. So we talk about hundreds of trillions of dollars with pension funds and so on, and insurances and so on. So this will be actually very, very wild. And we saw already in 2022 that the TLT um, collapsed 50%. It, it was more volatile than gold. It was more volatile than Bitcoin, you know? And this is crazy. In one year, 50% decline. It's it's mind-blowing, actually. But if you see the, the channel, it just went down, 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 down. And now we just broke out. And I think we, we see a, a paradigm shift as well on the, on the bond market. So I can... Definitely imagine like 10% on the on the 10 years, and this will be um, actually the end of the whole monetary system. Uh, absolutely, because how can you afford that? Like it, we, we spoke about oh. U.S. debt, uh, which will also, of course, uh, you know, bring with it higher rates and higher uh, interest payments. Uh, southern debt, a lot of the U.S. debt is held abroad as well. China, Japan owns a lot of that uh, as well. And uh, if push comes to shove, China is going to sell. Yeah, right. they're all so, selling already. If you Russia, they just totally sold. I think everything, of course, yeah. Or China is selling. Saudi Arabia is selling. They're all selling this useless paper because they know the end is here. You know, they they they're getting rid of it and they buy, of course, then real assets like gold, for example. They sell paper. They buy hard commodities. They buy gold. Yeah, let's stay on commodities. It's pretty much our last topic here, a big topic here. Um, you, you mentioned gold and uranium as well. Let, let's start with uranium. Why is uranium so exciting? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I think we we are in a in a super cycle, in a commodity super cycle, and this is just the beginning. Um, uranium is exciting because we um, uh, saw that it's it's um, free of emission and it's green. It's a it's a green energy. Um, 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 source and it's of course it's not like renewable energy like wind and solar. It, it's called in German it's called Grund. Was is was heißt Grundlast? Grundlastfähig. Oh, oh good. Um, Weil selbst er nicht. Geil. Was sagst du? Uh, base load. Base load power. Base hey, load. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's exactly it's base load power and it's not like um, yeah. Um, Unlimited, what's it called? Sorry, just losing um, um, Flatterstrom. Flatterstrom is also a schwierig oh. word. So rausschneiden, sorry. <laughs> Flatterstrom is like it just, it just just fluctuates the power. Sorry, but uh, ah, exactly. it's not like flu- fluctuating electricity from from solar or from wind. Yeah. And it's it's guaranteed. You just can plan with it. You know, it's it's you can plan with with nuclear power and all over the world, except in Germany, of course, because we are <laughs> super intelligent. Yeah, um, they build nuclear power plants. Because then, even in Saudi Arabia, you know, because they know one day uh, perhaps the oil will be gone, which I don't think we will ever um, achieve it. But it is an, it is another topic. Um, so we see like eighty. No new projects on, on globally on new power plants. We just in, in Italy, in, in, in Poland, in, in the French government, Macron said there will be a nuclear power strategy for the next 10 years. Why? Because no emissions, it's 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 carbon neutral and it's planable. So that's perfect. So that's why I see I think um, after like a bear market in the uranium spot price and with the uh, miners as well, there's a golden opportunity um, or a yellow opportunity for the next couple of years. I think the bull market just started and the, the price for uranium is on a 16 year high. We just crossed $80 per pound. And I think we will go um, on, on three figures in the next couple of months and years. So I think 
till the end of the decade, I'm really bullish on uranium and you have to have it on in your portfolio. So, um, yeah, so you have like nice, nice um, um, profits. Yeah. Uh, how would you play it? Uh, uh, how would you invest into uranium? Like, how do I put it into my portfolio, as you say? Um, you can buy an ETF. But you always have to check the taxes. You can buy um, an ETF with miners or on the spot price. And, and I personally prefer actually um, companies. So, um, for example, Cameco or Casatopom, yeah, they, they also pay a nice dividend. They are the, the, the world leaders actually in this space. I think it's a must have to own them. They went up pretty well this year. I think over they doubled nearly this year. So if there is a, a pullback, you can buy if there's a correction buy it um, and then i think on the second line there are like uh, bannerman denison mines uh, energy fuels next gen and i had a lot of them in my last book and they all tripled and um, they are great companies and i think they will have a, a great uh, future for the next couple of years so if you want to go safe buy an etf of course perhaps with miners as well on the spot yeah. one thing that always has me i would say nervous about uranium is the source of supply for it. That's the, the big question mark for me. Um, it ha has that changed a bit, the supply dynamic? Because, uh, you know, now at $82, there might be more incentive to bring new mines online. Uh, is, is that an issue at all, an oversupply scenario or undersupply scenario? How, how does that look real quick, just to, to, to wrap that up? Yeah, Kai, um, if you start a uranium mine right now, till the first time you um, bring the first pound to earth, it takes like 12, 15 years. So even if they start right now, it takes time. So um, the supply is there, but the demand is much higher for the next couple of years. And there was a problem in the past, for example, because um, countries or governments, they um, use their nuclear um, bombs and they just use this and sold it on the market. And that's why we had like uh, declining prices. But this is over right now because we live in a multipolar world and we see all the governments, they want to go for war again. I don't know why, but this is the cycle. So we will see also more demand on the on the government side, on, on military side. And that's why I think it takes some time. That's why I think the next five to 10 years, we have a bull market in uranium. And that's why I'm very positive. And I, I wouldn't really, um, um, disappointed if it wouldn't outperform, for example, the Nasdaq. No, interesting. Let, let's talk about the other yellow metal. Let's talk about gold. Uh, we recently broke through an all-time high, but we fairly quickly pulled back again. There wasn't a lot of follow-up buying uh, in the precious metal. Uh, why is that? Why, why didn't we see a follow-through? Why didn't we quickly you know, hold the 2100 line or even run higher? Yeah, I think still the interest rates are super high. I'm really surprised that the gold price is that high with 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 an interest rate of over five percent. Because normally, you know, you know, there is no correlation exactly the the, the opposite. So actually, with five percent um, interest rate, gold price should be much lower. On the other side, um, we see a disconnect between the interest rates, of course, and the the, the gold price. So either the 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 the, um, the the price goes down or the thing goes up. So um, um, I think. The next couple of years, we will see higher prices um, with gold because the demand will go up because of inflation, of the second inflation wave. And also the central banks, they will buy even more. And people will get out of bonds and they will buy gold again. So as soon as the Fed or the, the ECB lower the rates, we will see a flight into securities, into a safe haven, and it will be on the one side, definitely gold. So if this door opens, I think we will see new all-time highs. I expect 2,300 to 2,500 in the next one to two years. And um, till the end of the decade, I can imagine that we go way above 3,000 bucks. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, how about silver? Uh, gold's little brother, silver? <laughs> <laughs> the, they... I'm, I'm super optimistic on silver. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no. Just to, just to follow up because they usually go uh, you know hand in hand, of course. So. Yeah. I have to ask. I think I think silver will outperform gold because um, um, it's used in the industry even more than gold, and it's even more rare than um, uh, scarce like like gold. So I think we will see on the top like three figures, so over a hundred bucks. And I have to explain: you no, know, the gold price doesn't go up 
the purchasing power of the dollar is going down. That's the whole secret, actually. If you understand this, that one ounce of gold is always one fucking ounce of gold, then you just got it, you know, because you just have to pay more paper money, fiat scam money for the same ounce of gold. And that's it. You use you lose purchasing power. And to stop it, you need limited assets like gold or silver. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have any investment advice there? I wouldn't say no, it's wrong word, not investment advice, but some ideas that where people can put their money to participate in a potential gold or silver rally? Of course, physical is very important. For example, in Germany or sometimes in Europe, in some countries, you can buy uh, physical gold still anonymously. You know, you give the money and you get the, the gold coin or the silver coin and there's no like... Um, yeah, um, um, proof or something, no trace exactly. And um, on the other side, you also need commodity stocks. You need gold stocks and uh, miners like gold, silver miners. I would definitely buy some of them. You can buy an ETF, for example, where different miners are. So you're more like um, diversified or you buy um, companies which are in the in the, in the K92, for example, is, is a great gold mine. The jurisdiction is not too, too good. It's Indonesia, but still, it's I think it's the best mine in the world. And you also get some um, dividend. On the other side, there is uh, Wheaton, of course, Hecla, Upra Silver, a smaller one. And if you're really speculative, you can go to Hercules or something like that. There are some incredible names out there, but there are also a lot of scams. So just watch <laughs> out and um, inform yourself. That's why you have to um, subscribe to this channel. Absolutely. Or attend Deutsche Goldmesse, where you can meet the CEOs and actually look them in the eye. And then and you can meet me again as well, in person. <laughs> exactly. We're going to do that in May again, actually, Mark. So really looking forward to that. Um, Trying to think, like a couple last questions, because we uh, promised our viewers that we're going to do a bit of an outlook to 2024. So I'm going to ask a question like, what is one of the biggest opportunities and what is one of the biggest threats you see uh, in 2024? I think 2024 will be a roller coaster ride. It will be really wild and volatile because I think we will see a change in the, in the um, policy of the Fed. And this will cause panic, actually. And I think we see the end of the Magnificent Seven. I think they're totally overvalued. I think we can see new all-time highs next year on the stock market, definitely, because um, so much money will pour in. We already saw, which I actually predicted, um, the, the rally at the end of the year, which already happened, and new all-time highs at the stock market. And we see NVIDIA and um, the Big Seven um, getting more and more important. And it's, it's a cluster uh, risk, actually. You know, um, If you buy an ETF on the MSCI, you are I think over 60% in the US and of the 60%, I think like 30, 35% is the big seven. So if there is a panic coming and they all want to sell, the door is like this big and all want to get out. I think that the prices will just collapse of this big seven because you have to sell them. You have to sell them Meta and the Microsoft and the Amazon and the Apple and so on. So I wouldn't, if, if I would own them, I sold them already, perhaps too early, but hey, I, I prefer to be too early than too late. Um, um, you should think about it um it, when to lock in your your profits you know or secure your actually your portfolio with stop loss and so on so i think we will see um a volatile market very volatile and we see new problems on the horizon we are in a multipolar world which is always trouble it's always risky so i think you should the biggest opportunity is in my opinion, commodity stocks for the next couple of years, but just expect volatility and a roller coaster ride. And I definitely think Bitcoin will be really surprising to many people for the next couple of years. So you should look into it. Fantastic. Mark, amazing closing words. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks so much for your time. Where can we find more of you, Mark? You can follow me on X. It's at Mark Friedrich7. Uh, same on YouTube. I've got a pretty big channel with German content, but also English content. Um, I have people there from all over the world, great investors. Rick Rule, for example, thanks to you, Kai, and um, uh, Peter Saihan and Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy. Great minds and with very important input to make up your own mind if you have different opinions. It's very important in, in a world like this. And um, of course, as well on my website, it's a Friedrich minus partner. .de. Um, I'm a financial consultant and um, as well on uh, mark-friedrich.de. I'm, I'm a speaker. If you want to book me for a keynote, I come to Dubai, London, New York or Landshut.
Oh, Lanzut, fantastic. Awesome. Or Frankfurt in that matter. So fantastic. <laughs> eh. That's for you. <laughs> okay, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Mark, thank you so much for your time. Happy holidays. Enjoy the Christmas time and uh, you know, get get some rest because you have a book coming out January twenty third. Uh, exactly. I'm sure that'll take a lot of energy marketing promoting it. So yeah. Get get some rest, Mark, and uh, everybody Thanks. else. Thank you so much for tuning in. We tremendously appreciate your time. Thanks so much for, for listening. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button so we can bring guests like Mark Friedrich back on the channel more frequently. It helps us out tremendously. It helps with the visibility of the channel. And... Uh, let us let us know. Comment below. What are, what are you thinking is going to happen? Are you positioned in mining stocks? What mining stocks do you own? Happy to hear about it. Uh, Mark knows a lot about mining stocks. Unfortunately, we ran a bit out of time here. Maybe we'll do an episode one of these days where we just talk about gold and gold mining stocks, silver mining stocks as well. I think we should do that actually, Mark, uh, where we just talk about that topic. But for me, it was important to cover sort of a bit of a review of 2023, but also provide an outlook for 2024. Very volatile times, as Mark said. Make up your own mind and uh, let us know what you think down below. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back with lots more.